Hey everyone, Duke Nougat 3D here with another mask in my collection to show for you guys, and today I have the first pattern of Burel Cops type in the rather uncommon law enforcement configuration. Uh, this is a mask that I've already done a review with uh, with Moulage as a sort of co-op review, albeit it was sort of a shit posty review with it with completely incomprehensible lighting conditions, but nevertheless, I as after visiting with him one came up for sale through the uh, through another private collector uh, who's basically unloading his entire collection me and Moulaj have been getting all his uh, industrial stuff off of him but I managed to stag this because this mask has actually been on my want list for a long time and um, so here we have the again the rare or at least mostly uncommon I'd, I'd like to say these are rare just because there's like there's only like about a handful of these in private collectors. There's probably more that we don't know of, but again, I digress. The Burel Cops type uh, in the law enforcement configuration. Um, I'm not going to go into the full history of the Burel Cops type. I've In all my previous videos of the second pattern, um, I cover this history well enough, and you can go check those out if you want to know more about the series. This is going to be focused mainly on the law enforcement configuration and showing off any details which I were, was not able to clearly show in the review with Moulash due to the lighting conditions. So um, I should also go out and say that... Uh, Evidence has come to light that these this particular setup may actually be called the Model B Infantry Mask due to a uh, Federal Labs catalog that Moulage owns that specifically labels this mask as such. However, that may just be a catalog uh, bullshit designation that Federal Labs made to market these masks easier. Um, so for the time being, I will refer to them as the Model B Infantry Mask. However, they, these are MSA Burel Cops types with uh, Type G canisters. So, first of all, this setup is uh, very reminiscent of the World War I Cops, Tiso and Monroe mask, the, which is the face piece is, is actually based directly off of and bears the namesake of its inventor, Waldemar Cops. Um, the main difference is, again, from the Bureau Cops type and the World War I Cops, Tiso and Monroe, is the fact that the Bureau Cops type will have chromed eyepieces. The harness buckles will be sewn directly onto the face piece as opposed to on the head pad, like the KTM. Um, and the internal deflector system is more like that of the Akron Tiso than of the KTM, where it was basically a, a cone-shaped folded rubber pouch uh, rather than a separate, two separate Y-tubes. And then, um, obviously, other minute differences in hardware, such as the flutter valve guard not having a cross strap, uh, etc., and so on and so forth. But anyhow, more onto this COPS type here. Typically what you'll see um, with this law enforcement configuration, the Model B, is that um, these will typically have a recycled World War I M1 chest carrier. This is the, they're, as far as I know, these are always the late war pattern that have the uh, extended rain gussets uh, and basically the ones that were designed for TSO masks and not the shorter ones with the smaller gussets that were designed for the box respirators. Uh, you can see some markings on the internal flap there. Um, this may or may not be purposely made for this mask. I can't tell for sure if they actually made these carriers themselves or if they just recycled uh, World War One era ones. I believe it was the latter, given the fact that there is an 18 here and that might be indicative of a 1918 date. And also the fact that on the external flap, there is remnants of a size three stamp, whereas these masks were not stamped with sizes whatsoever. Um, and you can see that this bag is a bit dirty, but very good, no rust or anything. You can see uh, previously a law enforcement um, officer had written his name on here, some sort of official, uh, some sort of uh, officer, and also on the opposite side as well. I can't really make them out, unfortunately, and there really isn't too much remarkable about this carrier. Again, it's just a standard M1 chest carrier, and if you look inside, there is no spring to retain the, uh, to elevate the canister off the bottom of the carrier, given the fact that the Type G canister uh, has several improvements that negate the need for a spring, and I will go over those now, that I can show this off in better lighting. I should also note that this mask has been completely restored by myself. I've repainted all the metal hardware that needed repainting, and I have not gone through the process of rewiring and taping everything back together, given the fact that I would re much rather have it in a state where I can easily disassemble it and remove individual components for demonstrative purposes and also for the sake of preservation, because when I want to store this mask, I don't want anything getting folded or crushed or etc. So. Anyhow, the canister obviously has no wire and tape on it, so I can just remove it from the hose. Um, you can see that this canister 
uh, says, warning, the purpose of this canister is to purify air containing irritating and poisonous gases and smokes used as chemical warfare agents. Do not use against ammonia, carbon monoxide, illuminating gas, mine gases when fighting fires in closed places, in mine rescue work, etc., etc., so on and so forth. And you may notice here that it says, the Lake Erie Chemical Company, Cleveland, Ohio, USA. All of these canisters, almost all of them, I've only seen one other example of these canisters that was not relabeled by Leco, but more often than not, these canisters are a Leco redistributed because actually underneath this label, I'm not going to peel it back. I've actually lifted the corner here. There is another label that MSA put on here that, that designates this canister as the type G canister for military gases. Um, and as you can see, it's just a very tall gray canister. This this filter is really the apex of what could have been developed during World War One, but they didn't. Instead of requiring springs on the bottom, as mentioned before, there's the typical standard disc type inlet valve, and there are these four um, little dividers here, which serve as air channels to let the canister be elevated off the bottom of the carrier and allow air to pass underneath and into the filter itself, rather than, again, requiring a spring. On the top here, you have the typical MSA remove seal on bottom of canister before using, and you have a lot number or serial code 740-340, um, then the view inside the canister, oops, excuse me, bump the camera, um, with a bit of tape around the shank, the hose shank of the uh, filter for fixing the hose. Uh, you, I also have retained the original plug that went on the bottom of this canister, which I'm not going to place back in its original spot because this thing is falling apart and I had to glue it all back together. And it's missing one of the cross tapes. You can, as a fact, you can actually see the bare patches of brass where the tape originally was covering. They basically, once they sealed these canisters up, that's when they painted them. It's very weird how they did it back then. Uh, that's really all there is to say about this. And again, the setup was only used by law enforcement as far as I know. This was never used as a military mask, despite the canister saying it's for military gases. Um, anyways, onto the face piece. The face piece is a bit worse for wear, as you can see. It's overall very good condition. The main issue is the eye pieces, as you can see, are crazed on one lens and then cracked on another, um, which is pretty typical for these early Burel masks, but uh, it was exacerbated by the fact that this face piece was stored in a cramped conditions in that M1 chest carrier for well over 90 years. Um, you can see the later type of hose. This is the 10 inch M1 hose, except uh, this one is the later type, which is not stock and it coated. These would, and this is pretty common for the later production of the early first pattern Bureau cops types where they would just have the later hoses on them and not use the uh, World War One era hoses. Um, you can see the flutter valve is fully intact and flexible and it has the, even the gum rubber band, which would have been covering the wire and tape, which is no longer present, is still fully flexible and showing no signs of degradation or cracking. You can see where the flutter valve guard is bolted onto the angle tube assembly, and I can remove the hose, showing the hose stem where the hose would be affixed to. You can see that the uh, see the rubber band that which cover which would cover the wire and tape on the hose if it were present, which it is not. Uh, and removing the flutter valve as well, since there is no wire, re uh, reveals the weird corrugated uh, stem that the flutter valve would be affixed onto, which there would be a layer of tape underneath that. Uh, and looking at the valve itself, you can see a 634. This may or may not be a date, could possibly be a lot number, I'm not entirely sure. But obviously the valve is fully intact, the gum rubber band is good. Nothing much to be said there. Um, one of the main problems with this mask, aside from the eyepieces, is that this lens wants to warp into the mask. It is, per it is pretty much permanently set to be um, reversed inwards, and I'm trying to... Uh, correct that by using a face form as you can see but it's not I, I, it's going to take a long while before this thing is corrected again uh, the head harness unfortunately is not original I do have the original harness but it is a bit torn up the elastic got very weak over time and the, it is torn in a couple different places so this C15 harness is almost identical to the type issued with the Bureau Cops type so it is a good placeholder for display for the time being um, on the chin here you can see or hopefully you can there is a stamp uh, which bears the name COPS, and then there is patented November 1921, which I, I think that's what it says down there. Um, or I can't really read much, but I can make out where it says COPS right there, K-O-P-S. And hopefully you can too, because this is a very, unco it's very hard to find these stamps intact. They're usually completely faded away and just very hard to find. And on the other side, there would have been a Bureau of Mind stamp right here, which is also faded and indecipherable. And then I will show off the internals of the mask and then wrap up the review for you guys. This is going to be difficult because, again, the mask will want to warp in on itself. 
Um, so give me one moment here, folks. Here's the internals of the mask, and as you can see, there's that lens wanting to bulge inwards uh, due to the poor storage that this mask has been in. You can also see the TSO deflectors of the mask itself, which, as mentioned before, with early production runs of the Bureau Cops type, these would have literally been pulled off of Akron TSO uh, masks, where they just cut the ends to be triangular so they wouldn't collapse and potentially close off the air passages. And again, the deflectors are not wired and taped onto the angle tube. I can simply pull them free uh, to give you a better view of this assembly. Uh, this is the later pattern, which is not an Akron T, off an Akron T. So this is, this is the one. These are the ones that are made specifically by MSA, and you can also see the stem where the uh, deflectors would have attached, and also the chin seam throughout the bottom of the mask, where the uh, mask is literally sewn together at the, the chin and then covered with a strip of fabric tape. And this is usually where these masks are failing. The, the tape will often delaminate, uh, the stitching will fail, etc. And I'm lucky that this mask is in such good condition aside from the eyepieces and the permanent set itself. And you can also see the various fabric patches to reinforce where the harness is or, or the uh, buckle webbing is sewn onto the face blank itself. And really not much else to say. There's no really no other markings, etc. It's just, it is what it is. So, that being said, I hope you enjoyed. Uh, I don't really have too much else to say about this. If I missed anything, feel free to let me know. Um, and that really about wraps it up. Very, very uncommon mask, and I'm very happy. I'll probably end up replacing this face piece in the future. I'll have this one around to kind of fool around with, but I really want to have a good condition face piece with this setup. Um, but... Nevertheless, I'm very happy to have this, and thank you to the person who sold this to me. You know who you are if you're watching this, and uh, that's that's about it. Uh, if you have any comments, questions, corrections, or concerns, drop them down in the comments below. I'm Duke Nugget3D, and I'll see you all later.